Whoop. Oh, there I am. I did flip the right switch. Hello, everybody. We're on now, and I want to first be thanking everybody that came in today and everybody that may be watching online. Next week is pizza night. I get, yeah, it's first Wednesday in August. So praise the Lord. First one. <laughs> The first Wednesday it gets hot, we're going to have pizza. So that'll be next Wednesday, unless it gets cold. So um, we're so thankful that everybody's here. Uh, if it gets cold, y'all really pray for cold, because he'll buy double pe double the pizza for cold. I might eat, the, eat double the pizza for cold when you get down to it. Don't leave home without Jesus. Take him everywhere you go, oh, 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 don't leave home without Jesus, every time you're ready to row. He'll be your beacon in the middle of the night, your master navigator, your guiding light. Don't leave home without Jesus, take him everywhere you go. You may forget your keys, you might forget your phone. Forget the second notice on a pass through loan. Overcoat, laptop, GPS, checkbook, grocery list, and all that mess. But don't leave home without Jesus. Take him everywhere you go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't leave home without Jesus. Anytime you're ready to row. He'll be your friend in the darkest hour. Help you hold your Savior with the Holy Ghost power. Don't leave home without Jesus. Take him everywhere you go. Forget about the gossip. Forget about the lie. Forget the temptation of a wandering eye. Forget about the liquor. Forget about the dope. Remember King Jesus is your only hope. Don't leave home without Jesus. Take him everywhere you go, whoa, 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 don't leave home without Jesus, anytime you're ready to row. He's a good shepherd, the great I am, the Alpha and Omega to the wandering lamb, don't leave home without Jesus, take him everywhere you go, take him everywhere you go, take him everywhere you go. Amen. Don't ever leave home without Jesus. And you know what? <laughs> when I first heard that song, it said, don't leave home without Jesus. That presumes that Jesus then is in your home also. Um, so I guess I would always say, when you're thinking don't leave home without Jesus, just always keep him at home. Keep him in your home, and he'll always leave with you when you go. Um I can't think of anything more exciting to say. I've got to stop that. That's making a lot of racket. Um, I do want to uh, see. I mentioned pizza. I got a team roping at the, I guess it's this weekend at the expo. Yeah, that's what I've heard anyway. And are, 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 <clears throat> are the cattle gone? Are they still here? The cattle are gone from the fire. So the, 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 the cattle left yesterday morning and, um, we're again thankful for those who have worked so hard to uh, keep the fire down and keep it from spreading. And those that were back up, uh, not back up, but those people that really don't get the recognition. It's people that move the cows, the people that feed and water the animals at the expo, the fe feed and water the animals wherever they are. There's a lot of work that goes on behind, so we're very thankful for that. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful and so thankful that you're here with us tonight. Father, you're a mighty God, and Lord, you deserve the glory and the praise for all that is, all that has been, and all that will be. And Father, we just ask that we recognize that and that we give you that praise and that we worship you wholeheartedly, Lord, with all that we are. Father, we ask that this evening um, our ears and hearts would be open to the message that JJ's going to give us we pray, Lord, too, that you would send rain. We know, God, that it's going to come in the time that you've appointed it to come. And we're looking forward to that time. And we praise you, Lord, that we're one day closer to the day that it's going to rain. 
we thank you, Father, that it's not 110, that it's less than 105. And we praise you, God, that um, you're in control of the weather. No one can forecast it, God. Only you know when it's going to happen. Lord, we ask that um, you just be with us this evening. Keep our hearts and mind open. And thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we are going to be hot for a bit. If I'm forecasting, God can change that. God can change that anytime he wants to. I'm ready. I don't think any of us would argue with that one. This is something to kind of keep in mind, though. <laughs> I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I could be what I wanted to be. I thought of myself on life's sinking sand. But Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountains too high, the valleys too wide. Down on my knees is where I learn to stand. And Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I thought I could do a lot on my own. I thought I could make it all alone. I thought of myself as a mighty big man. But Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountains too high, the valleys too wide. Down on my knees is where I learn to stand. And Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I'm going to make my all in all, in good times and trouble, on his name I'll call. If I didn't believe him, I'd be less of a man. And of course I can't even walk without holding your hand. I can't even walk without you holding my hand the mountains too high the valleys too wide down on my knees is where i learn to stand and lord i can't even walk without you holding my hand down on my knees is where i learn and Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. We cannot. We cannot. There's the man with the plan. And we didn't even talk about it. Are we on? Oh, we are now. You're live. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? 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 You know, this week has been, uh, I don't know, kind of been an eye-opener. It's been a, uh, uh, is that home out of yours or mine? Coming out of mine? we got a home down here. Home. I'm not homing. <laughs> But there's a home down here. We're going to miss you right here, Bobby. 
We just ain't figured out how much. No, it's all gone. But uh, it's kind of been an eye opener for me. You know, we've been going through this book of Daniel, and, and I've been reading it and studying it and pondering it. And then on our Monday night small group, uh, we're going through the book of Daniel. We have a lesson that's called Thriving in Babylon. And it's all based on how Daniel and, and, and his guys, you know, got along. And uh, I've been thinking all week, you know, what was the thing? Was there one thing that kept these guys close to God? Every day. It, it, it appears to me that these guys were close in their relationship with God on a daily basis. Uh, so, and I got to thinking, was it just a prayer? Or was it just a worship? Or, or their fellowship one to another? You know, because we know that they had great camaraderie, they had great fellowship. Because right at the beginning of the book, uh, when Daniel went to Nebuchadnezzar, he asked him for some time to figure out the dream. And the first thing he did is he went back to those guys and he got his prayer team together and started praying. So we know that they had this camaraderie. So I wanted to figure out, try to see, to help me in my walk, what it was. And then that's what I come up with. And that's what God laid on my heart. It's that their relationship was a way of life, a daily walk, if you will, that they walked every minute of every day. It wasn't something that they did and put down, something that they had to focus on doing, something that they had to work, something that they planned. I'm going to plan my Bible study. I'm going to plan Sunday. I'm going to plan my prayer. It was all of these things that they did in a daily time, on a daily basis, all the time. So their daily walk was what kept them in that situation. So when it come time to eat the meat, they said, hey, how about we do this? When it come time to, you know, uh, answer the uh, the king's call before they all got put to death to tell him about his dream said hey let's pray let's get together let's pray god was their go-to god was their walk god was not a part of their life god was their life and they walked it every day so i titled this message our daily walk the struggle and the blessing because a daily walk doing it daily every minute of every day becomes a lot harder than going to church on sunday a daily walk is a lot harder than going to making a Bible study on Monday night or Tuesday night or Wednesday night. Every minute daily, 24-7, walk with God is something that takes, you said something to me, contract and commitment the other night. It takes commitment to the contract, to the covenant. It takes a commitment to the decision that we've made. We have accepted Christ. Now it takes a commitment to that agreement, to that to that contract or <coughs> terms and conditions or however you want to put it that we're going to be committed to fulfill that every day and i think the, well, i know that that's what made these guys so strong that they were ready for anything that was thrown at them at any point in time anyway because they were always walking with the lord they were never walking on their own they were never caught blindsided or because they were all oh, god was always right here they had never walked away and left them they never got up in the morning and left them at home you know what i mean you saying i can't even walk without you holding my hand these guys realize that they can't walk they can't go through each day unless they're physically spiritually mentally connected to god every minute of every day and that's how they got through so i got to thinking who in the new testament where in the new testament does this resonate? Is there another place, another group of guys, another uh, individual that had this walk, that knew that he needed to keep God close every day? And it came down to Paul. And, and we see it. And I thought, of, God laid this on my heart, the scripture, in Acts chapter 16. If you've got your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 16. And this is a great example of being in that daily walk because what these guys did, they walked in a way that everything they did, they wanted it to honor God. They wanted it to be pleasing to God. So for that to happen, we have to be prepared. We can't just get caught off guard. So in Acts chapter 7, I'm talking about a couple guys. We're going to start off in verse 16. Y'all have heard this story. If you've been in church, you've been around church, you've heard this story a bunch. It says, one day we were going down to the place of prayer, and we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. 
She had earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortune, and she followed Paul and the rest of us shouting. These, followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got exasperated. That's a pretty big word there, huh? Yeah. Could, you know, could have said upset, you know, agitated, but he didn't. He got aspirated. Huh? That's what it says. Exasperated. All right. He got exasperated. He got upset with him. He said, and he turned. He's that returned her and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And instantly it left. And her master's hope for wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. And the whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews. They shouted to the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. And a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. And they were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison and the jailer was ordered to make sure that they did not escape. So the jailer put them in the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in stocks. And around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and saying hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundation and all the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off and the jailer woke to see the prison doors wide open and he assumed the prisoner had escaped and he drew his sword to kill himself but Paul shouted to him stop don't kill yourself we are all here then the jailer called for lights and he ran to the dungeon fell down trembling before Paul and Silas then he brought them out and that serves what must I do to be saved they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. Okay. So as we're thinking of our daily walk, and one thing we have to realize and we have to truly understand and we have to keep, keep a bearing on is the devil knows who we are. We can't escape from him. This girl was walking behind them. She was possessed with a demon, an evil spirit, and calling them guys out. They weren't hidden. They weren't just getting through town. They weren't, you know, just being secret. They were on their way going to prayer. Doesn't say that they were preaching. Doesn't say they were making a big scene. But this demon knew them and called them out. She wasn't praising God. She was doing the opposite. She was what? She was mocking God when she said that they are the God of the Most High and they will teach you to be saved. Isn't that what the world does to us? Isn't that the world calls us and tries us? and pesters and is working and just nagging and going and doing and they're trying to get a response i tell everybody y'all remember the deal about the cake with the baker baker in california that he wouldn't make the wedding cake all that went on that wasn't about a cake that was a situation just like this they wanted a response so that they could reply and show to the world and said isn't that what they try to do uh everywhere they go the world tries to poke and jab and stuff because they want a response See, the devil knows exactly who we are. He knows who to pick on, and he knows the ones to go to. Verse 18 said that Paul was exasperated, that he was annoyed. You see, you can't just ignore the devil. We can't go through life out of sight, out of mind. We can't think that if we're quiet enough, if we hide under our bed, that the devil will leave us alone that we can escape him. Paul and them weren't doing anything but walking to prayer. They were going down. Guys, I don't know if you all realize this on this camera, but I'm not on your screen. I just happened to look up and see that. I don't know where your, your, your setting is, but I'm still going out on Facebook. All right, but can you set the screens? They got you on these two? Uh, got me if I stay in the air we go and, <laughs> and ta da <laughs> yeah I am between my exes I'm standing right here at the podium and all they get is like half of me you know 
Maybe half's enough. I don't know. It's my better half. The devil's not going to get up. He wants to get to the point to we do what? That we react. That we, and how does he want us to react? Right. Well, to act like the world does. Response, right? And that was they say, and was one of the biggest words that they call the brothers and sisters, the church people? Hypocrites, right? We say one thing, we act another. As soon as it gets hot, as soon as the furnace is turned up, as soon as the pressure's on, all of this God stuff falls off, and we react and we revert right back to the wall. They're no different. And that's why the devil follows it. It says that this went on for days. I want to ask you right now, how many of y'all would be able to go for days with someone walking behind you, just yakking and yakking and yakking and yakking, yakking and yakking, day in and day out. You get up, they're yakking. You go to bed, you get back up, they're still yakking. But they were looking to get a response out of Paul and them. And he got annoyed, and he actually turned around and blessed that young girl, didn't he? His response was not, shut up, go away, leave me alone. If you believe I'm a, a child of the Most High, you have no business with me, get away from me, depart from me. I talked last week about how churches are quickly to cull out those that, that are mavericks and stuff and all, and how they do it. Paul and Silas easily could have culled this girl out, but he didn't. You know, a lot of people miss the fact that he turned around, the Bible says he casted out the demon. The demon that had tor tormented her all her life was now gone. She could now live the life that God had for her, not the life that was governed in turmoil. By the way. But get, what did that do? That didn't sit well with them guys that were making money, did it? Because I'm going to tell you right now, the world don't like it when you stand up for God. Okay? When you stand for Jesus, you're going to make enemies. Do you think Paul cared about that? Do you think that Paul was worried about that? Why didn't Paul do? Why didn't Paul react in a way the world acted? He reacted and he blessed this young lady. The world came against him. And the people responded. If you look at verse 19, it's in their master's hope for wealth were now shattered and they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged they knew this little girl was possessed by a demon they knew that she was tormented you would have thought if anybody would have been around there if anybody that families that known her would have been excited that thou this is over this is gone she's free but that wasn't it was it because her masters, all they wanted to do was make money off her. Isn't that all the world wants to do is make money? All the world wants to do is further itself. Isn't the world self-focused and all about me? Not really worrying so much about the others? Here Paul is, he blessed this girl. Freed her of this demon. And all he did was make a whole bunch of enemies. And when we stand up for God, we're going to do the same thing. And understand when I say stand up, it doesn't mean stand up and wave a flag and scream and holler. Paul just turned around and just spoke these words out of her in the name of Jesus and it left. He, <laughs> he didn't preach a big sermon. He didn't call her out. He didn't call the people out calmly like a Daniel, like a Shadrach and a Meshach, shined in the midst of all this controversy. See, the lost, the people of the world, they want to hide us from the world. They don't want us to get any exposure. I can tell you that right now because all you got to do is turn on the news. You won't find anything about all the good things that are going on or, or what Christian brothers and sisters have done. And stuff. All you're going to find out is about the bad. You're going to hear about the murders, the rapes. And if you do get a church mentioned, it's going to be about a fallen leader, a fallen this or a fallen that. The world wants to keep us down and suppressed. But if we live our life, if we walk our daily walk close with God, as Paul and Silas did, it's going to make enemies, but it's going to keep us close to God. What, what kept Paul and Silas not fearful of what's happening? Couldn't they have just left town? Right? They could have just left town. You know what? I can't put up with this. I'm out of here. 
Isn't that a lot of times what we do as Christians? We allow them to force us. To, you know what? They don't like us here, and I got to go there, and I got to look at them. People look at me, and they, they reach for my back. And I'm just not going to go there because that's uncomfortable for me there. It's got pretty uncomfortable for Paul because he got exasperated. Right, Bobby? <laughs> he got exasperated because it went on for days, it says. But in this he had learned like Daniel and them that God was with him. His walk with God was more important than what the world was saying. And when he acted and when he responded, he wanted to do it in a way that brought honor to God, that God got the praise. You know, the devil's okay. He says, I don't care if you go to church. That's okay. I don't care if you go to a small group. I just want you to keep your mouth shut. Do what you got to do, but keep your Jesus to yourself. In our daily walk, our Jesus is signed. When, when, when we live out a life, that our, of our, <clears throat> live out our faith in our daily walk in our life, people see that because they are watching. They are seeing. They are looking. They're looking for the bad. They may ignore the good, but they see it whether they like it or not. There's no way to hide it and keep it hidden. It's funny, they tried to hide Paul and Silas, didn't they? You know, it said in verse 23 and 24, but it said they were severely beaten and they were thrown into the prison. And the jailer was ordered to make sure that he didn't escape. So the jailer put them in the inner dungeon, down in the bottom of the pit, and clamped, clapped their feet in stocks. They wanted to hide them. They wanted them to go away. They didn't want people to get focused on the two people that cast out the demon, that saved the little girl. They wanted them to remember the guys that cost them guys a bunch of money. We got to hide those guys. And you know what? We talk about being able to shine, to, to thrive in Babylon. Think about this. They've been beaten for doing God's work. They've been thrown in the darkest part of the prison. Their feet are, are, are chained in stocks. And what's the Bible say they were doing at midnight? Singing songs. Praising God. Singing songs and praising God. See, the world sees and hears everything we do. Good or bad, they see. They're looking for the bad, but they'll see the good. Paul and them didn't get down, did they? We're just going to keep on doing what we're doing. They continued to rely on God. Walk with him just as close as they were before they went in. They were headed to prayer. A few hours later, they're beating it in the bottom of the dungeon. Did it darken their walk? I don't think so. They're sitting there singing songs and bringing uh, praise to God. They never forgot where their peace from come from. They never forgot where their joy come from. They never forgot that they needed to always rely on God and be re walking with God in the darkness and in the light. And it's so easy for us to draw close to God in the valley, isn't it? It's so easy when it's the hard times and we need Him and we're struggling and we can't. But <coughs> this started off with two guys who were walking where? To church, to prayer. Strengthening their walk with God. Their daily walk. I'm going to church. I'm going to sing praises. I think it's so cool. You know what they did? They had church in the dungeon. They didn't make it to their church, but they had church in the dungeon. You know who they had church with? A bunch of nasty old sinners. Jailed up people. Just think of the people that were in, in that inner part of the prison with them. Those weren't your, you know, uh, what do you, what's the guys that get by with, can, you know, got all the privileges in prison? The trustees. They weren't the trustees. Bobby's my prison expert. <laughs> Not that he's ever been there. He just helps a lot of people out in the prison. Uh, I had to throw that disclaimer in there. <laughs> but they held church right there, didn't they? It's so important. How do these guys do it? They keep that daily walk going, 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 going. God is the most important thing. I want to live a life. That every decision I make, everything that I say, everything that I do, honors God. 
Everything that I say, everything that I do brings joy to God. It makes God happy to say that I am one of his. They took their notes from Daniel. Right? Daniel did everything that they did. They were in captives. They were prisoners. They were taken prisoners at a young age, as young boys. 11, 12, 13 years old, they were put into captive. They spent <clears throat> most of their life in prison and chains belonging to someone else. But yet they thrived where they were. Why? Because their daily walk with the Lord was the most important thing of their life. And that's something that we have to get to. And we can turn right over to Paul and Silas, and we see the same images, the same stuff, right in Paul and Silas, doing the same things. People listen when you're singing praises to God, especially in the dark times. How can you be so happy? How can you smile at a time like this? How can you not be as angry as the world is? How can you not get exasperated? Huh? I like that word. I'm going to keep using it for a while. I like upset better or agitated. Why is it that people listen more, pay attention more to us when it's in the dark times? Because the true you comes to light when the heat's turned up. The true you will come through when the heat's turned up. People want to watch how you act. It says in verse 27, it says that the jailer woke up to see the prison doors open and he assumed the prisoner had escaped and he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted out, stop, don't kill yourself. Did you get that? Next line, he didn't say we're here. You know what he said? We're all here. Now, I'm betting that's more than Paul and Silas. We're all here. So why didn't the other guys run? Why didn't the other guys go? They were kind of caught up with these two guys that in this dungeon down here singing praises to this God. And they're like, hold on a second. I got to find out more about this Jesus guy. If you guys could be this happy with blood pouring out your back and your feet in stocks in the darkest part of the prison, I need to find out more about this. What was the jailer's response? He fell to his knees. When we have a close daily walk with the Lord, people are attracted to it. You know that? People are attracted to it. They want to know how you can be in this dark time. How can you be in this dungeon? How can you be going through all this turmoil, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, the broken relationship? How can you be enduring that the way you are? I need to know. Why is it so important for them to know? Because they go through dark times too. I... I, I refer back a lot to that movie Fireproof and there at the end in the firehouse when his wife came in and she told him, she said, Caleb, there's something different about you. He changed his worldly walk to a daily walk with the Lord. He, he told his buddy when he first started, his heart wasn't in it, but now he was all in and he was going to do everything every day that he could to walk daily with the Lord, that he would live out his faith daily in his walk. And she said, Caleb, there's something different about you. You've changed. And then she said these words, I want what you have. Why? Did he preach to her every day? Did he get Bible verses? Did he slap her over the head with the Bible? Did he grab her by the arm and drag her to church? He did none of those things. All he did was walk daily close to God. And every day in and day out, they seen how he handled, how he reacted. They seen the peace and the joy and the comfort that he had in his life. They seen this total, genuine I mean, he was a firefighter. Y'all remember seeing when he saved the little girl? He climbed out from underneath the building with the little girl, and he saved the little girl, and he was all burned up. She watched her husband 
literally changed into something that his daily routine, the way he talked, the way he walked, the way he responded, had changed. And all she could say is, I want what you have. And he said, you can have it. Isn't that the greatest thing? Isn't that what the jailer said as he fell to his feet? I want what you have. The world says you should have ran. The things are open. The world says, I can't believe that you're all here. Can you imagine a guy thinking that none of them would be there? Or maybe one or two? The Bible said that Paul said out, says, don't kill yourself, we're all here. The jailer called for the lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked him, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Here's the gospel. They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we truly believe, there'll be a change and our walk will change, our talk will change. People will start to see Christ in us and the more they can see in us on a daily basis. I mean, it's nice to get dressed up for church. It's nice to show up for small group. All those things are important. But it's just as important that our walk is as close out there as it is in here. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. Father, as we give us these examples, we look at these young men in the Old Testament. We look at Paul and Silas. How important that our daily walk is. Not only to us, that it keeps us prepared. It keeps us grounded. It keeps us close. It keeps us comforted. It gives us peace. It enables us to endure. But what it does to those around us. When they see that we truly believe in the darkest time. That you are our God. Christ is our Lord and Savior. That our relationship with you. Far outweighs anything of this world. As we read here. The people were more worried about money. Than they were worried about the girl. Paul turned around and blessed that young girl. Set her free of the demon. Father, when we follow you, we're going to upset the world. So we need strength, and we need encouragement, and we need comfort. We need guidance. We need great courage. And we can only get all those things by a close, intimate walk with you. Father, strengthen us that we may grow that walk that we may stick closer to you than a brother, that we may stick as close as glue, that wherever they find us, they'll find you. Father, we love you and our desire is to please you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> How much our um, world is, the world is pulling at us but bring it down even to a really local or a real a level to me that that's so easy to, for me to understand is anytime that you meet an addict that is working on getting clean, the people that they, the world that they live in is the world that wants to drag them back to where they were. And um, so it's just something that's, you know, that closer walk with God to me also means it's, is who you are when you're in your car all by yourself. Are you walking with God right there? Um, if God set, God is sitting and Jesus is sitting in the seat next to you, um, are you are you knowing him sitting in the seat next to you? Or are you being something else? So, and it may be change a song, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to, um, I don't know about the able part, but y'all know I struggle with keys and deciding what keys I'm going to do stuff in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I can't hit the right notes, but we'll see if this works. <clears throat> I am weak, thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. 
near Lord close to thee just a closer walk with thee granted Jesus is my plea daily walking close to thee let it be dear Lord let it be world of tolls and snares. If I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is old, time for me won't be anymore. Guide me safely, gently, O oh, to thy kingdom, dear Lord, to thy show. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. I'll let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Daily walking close to thee. I'll let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Amen. It's that closer walk with God gets us where we're going and gets us there in a lot better shape and lets the world see our light. Let the world see God's light shine through us. And you know what? The darkness cannot stand in the light. And I can tell you all for a fact, I have no idea what true light is, but I do believe that darkness cannot, cannot stand in the light. Anyway, thank everybody for coming. I'm just I'm grateful for that and thankful. And um, y'all just remember to be careful going home and Remember that there's more grace in Jesus than there is sin in us. And y'all have a good night.